Hi everyone, I'm Sivan from the Cloudify team, and I'll be talking about model-driven orchestration for ONAP with uh, Tosca, on OpenStack, and Kubernetes. And no, we couldn't get any more buzzwords into that title. Um, so what is ONAP anyway? Hopefully most of us are aware of the concepts because I only have 10 minutes. Um, but ONAP is the open network automation platform. Uh, it's an open source project um, with this great framework that enables operators to uh, run and manage their, their networks, essentially. Um, as said, I won't dive deeply into what ONAP is. We're actually going to focus on one component specifically, and that's the OOM, um, what enables installation and management of ONAP. Um, and so as you can see, this is a relatively complex architecture uh, comprising of many components, many different services. And as said, it's an open source uh, product or project framework, however we call it, which is then being deployed at different operators in a different way. Um, and so the idea was to ensure that the installation and deployment of this architecture is made flexible so that if an operator has any specific needs and requirements from that installation and a different environment potentially, then OOM can still provide the needed installation method on that environment. And how did we do that? So uh, Tosca was a part of the title of the session. Who here is familiar with uh, Tosca, by the way? Oh, great. Um, so for those who aren't, TOSCA stands for Topology and Orchestration Specification for Cloud Applications. Uh, and the idea is to reduce the application uh, complexity and its modeling complexity by uh, decoupling between what the application is, um, what's the topology, what are the orchestration steps required to bring it up, to manage it, um, and talking about the entire life cycle of that application. Um, so separating that from the uh, cloud provider capabilities and the actual environment on which this application is, uh, is going to run eventually. Um, and so Tosca is a, a DSL. It's uh, model driven, very declarative. Uh, the idea is to just define what needs to be done and not how to do it. That is what enables us this uh, decoupling of the environment itself. And Kubernetes needs no introduction, uh, I imagine. Um, but it is somewhat inventive and, and interesting to find Kubernetes present um, at a provider and, and operator uh, space. So uh, the telecommunication industry doesn't necessarily um, embrace uh, new technologies uh, that quickly. Obviously, there is a lot that needs to change in order to embrace those. Um, but we were able to leverage uh, Kubernetes here. Um, again, one of the advantages is the uh, decoupling of the uh, application, and in our case of uh, OOM and the entire installation of ONAP, uh, decoupling that from the underlying infrastructure um, and making uh, multi-cloud, multi-environment, and flexibility um, much easier and uh, basically just possible. And so how does all of this come together? Uh, so OOM, the ONAP Operations Manager, um, basically needs to bring up all those different services and applications um, that ONAP requires. And obviously there are dependencies. Um, some things uh, need to be brought up before others can be instantiated. Um, there is need, needs to be constant uh, monitoring and tracking of those services to make sure that everything is up and running as it should. Um, and so uh, we've uh, decided to go with uh, Kubernetes and a microservices uh, approach um, where each of those services is, uh, is basically modeled as its own app and there's a definition uh, of the different relationships and dependencies between these apps. Now, I've mentioned Tosca before, so um, what you see here is uh, somewhat of a visualization for a uh, Tosca blueprint, which essentially enables us to define um, each of those applications, again, the dependencies between them, and then running each of those on its own uh, pod, as a pod. Um, and, uh, and it's all managed by, uh, by Kubernetes. Um, this is done with the Tosca blueprint, as said, but in order to do that, obviously we also need Kubernetes to be in play. Um, and so uh, what we did is uh, we took Cloudify, which is um, a model-driven orchestrator um, using, uh, using Tosca as its uh, DSL. Um, and with uh, Cloudify, we defined a, a blueprint, a Tosca model, um, which can bring up a few VMs on, uh, on OpenStack. 
And uh, the first one, I'm calling it a VM, it's actually a little more than that, but it's, uh, it's Kubernetes. So essentially we can orchestrate the creation of Kubernetes, which then orchestrates the creation of those additional uh, services or the services that ONEP uh, comprises of. Um, and uh, it creates the relationships, the dependencies, and manages and monitors um, that environment moving forward. The interesting bit here is that the deployment model is very flexible. So it doesn't actually have to be only a single instance um, of, uh, of the whole ONEP architecture that is brought up. Um, you can actually bring, more, bring up more than one. Uh, first of all, if it's a multi-cloud or multi-environment setup, then uh, this uh, architecture can be replicated. And the cool thing about orchestration and automation is that this happens with a click of a button. Basically, you can deploy it once, twice, many, multiple times. Um, and, uh, and that's uh, one interesting aspect of it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be multiple, deployed multiple times uh, because of a, a different environment. Uh, sometimes we see uh, um, testing uh, um, environments and production environments, and we'd like to make sure that the model fits all of those. So again, OOM was uh, built very, um, in a very flexible manner uh, so that this model can be supported. And uh, tying it all together. So um, as, uh, as said, we're using a relatively flexible deployment model. And the idea is that while um, ONAP is, is built on, uh, on OpenStack, it's, uh, it's possible to expand the environment and to run it on uh, uh, different providers as well. Um, and with uh, Kubernetes, we're able to really dynamically bring up the, the different services um, in the ONAP architecture. Um, and we do it all with Tosca, which again helps us decouple the environment from the application. Um, so this is truly model driven, uh, a declarative approach, which allows us a very flexible model for, um, for ONEP uh, installation. Um, we start with uh, what we refer to as the Kubernetes uh, blueprint, so that we can bring up the Kubernetes environment itself, um, and really the master and uh, and all the other services. Um, Kubernetes is brought up on OpenStack. The next step is using uh, what we refer to as the Kubernetes plugin to deploy applications on Kubernetes as pods. And these are the uh, different services that the architecture uh, uh, described before. Uh, so these are brought up on, uh, on Kubernetes. Um, and last but not least is actually an interesting uh, part um, where we can create a more dynamic Kubernetes uh, installation and uh, using what we refer to as a Cloudify provider, Kubernetes can actually ask for more infrastructure resources. So assuming that um, the Kubernetes cluster that was initially defined is not sufficient and uh, we need more resources, um, high availability, additional workloads, um, then Kubernetes can actually ask for more uh, resources and those can be provisioned, it's kind of tying it all together into a loop here. Um, so more resources can be deployed and uh, leveraged and used by Kubernetes. And I think with that, my 10 minutes are almost up. Uh, some resources uh, are available for, for all these. So there's uh, the Tosca blueprint that brings it all up, um, the um, uh, Helm charts, uh, everything that uh, we talked about. And yay, I'm done in time. I think we have about a minute for questions. Right, right. I only had 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Okay, great. Thank you.